hello everyone and welcome back to the channel so this is it after all this time and after all the topics that we have covered nothing feels as close to this one isn't it yes today we are going to start off with amazon virtual private cloud and it is going to be totally visualized as always don't worry this will be also divided into multiple parts for better understanding and all the links for all the sessions that we have will be given in the description as and when i actually complete them so please check them out in case you miss out on the sequence and make sure you don't forget to subscribe it really means a lot to me these videos and designs actually take a lot of time to make so please make sure you hit the like button and if you're new to the channel then you're most welcome and if you would like to support my work then it's an awesome day for us now you can support me on insta mojo or by using paypal and now you can join the tier 1 membership on the channel and get early access to the content by becoming a johnny on the spot patreon member as well all the links are in the description below if you like watching my content and if you wish to support me please check them out so without wasting any more time let's dig right into this and if you are ready let's begin So this is a very special day and I thought why not let me take you all for a trip. Don't worry about the world outside. This is completely safe and this is going to be our very own virtual trip. So you packed your bags and you were ready to move out and you thought of booking the tickets for the transport and the hotel. So you went online and you were done with the booking and you got your room reserved. So once you reached there you were greeted warmly by the hotel reception he said good afternoon my dear guest welcome to the hotel please listen to the hotel policies very carefully you have to pay for every service you consume but the good thing is and the good news is that the breakfast is complimentary have a great stay then he asked you would you be interested in taking a look at the services that the hotel has to offer you said well of course yes that would be great Then the manager showed you the list of features that are available to you at the hotel. So you have the gym and the pool area, you have the jacuzzi service, you have a variety of food service, you also have the service for bar and other drinks and the most important one, the Wi-Fi and the air conditioning. The bed of course is free. And all the services that you see here have a price attached to it, isn't it? That makes up the total price of the service package. So you have to choose the service that you need based on the budget that you had. So upon careful investigation and thinking, you decided to take the services that were essential to you, like the food, AC, Wi-Fi, pool, bar, and drinks, and you stayed there for about two days. So now the time has come for you to return back from the trip, back to your home. So now you went up to the reception and asked for the checkout. and you received your invoice bill the amount was around $225 and it was all that for the services that you had consumed or used in your stay at the hotel nothing more nothing less and then you verified the bill paid the amount that was charged and you left the hotel and went back to your home and that was the end of your trip so much fun isn't it you enjoyed every bit of your liking at the hotel but try and understand what exactly happened back there the hotel gave you a list of options as a part of their service catalog to choose the services that you would need as a part of your stay at the hotel and the policy stated that you pay only for the services you consume you had the idea of what you need and you were happy to pay for the services you consumed you were not charged for anything else other than what you used and once you were done you paid the amount and you then just vacated the place no questions asked and this is in fact a very simple way of understanding pay as you go service model here the service model being the hotel and i'm sure you're getting the idea of where we are heading towards but just hold on to that now let's turn the tables around and let's see what happens when we host an application on the cloud On the cloud environment we are treated the same way there are multiple services at the offer and we have to make the decision of what is the best fit for our application hosting On cloud we will be getting a pool of services starting from the type of processing power we need to the amount of storage we need to store our files 
we get the choice of databases, the choice of analytic tools, the security that we need for our data and all that we need to host our application. And yes, of course, the networking capabilities as well. But the most important thing is the underlying infrastructure is not ours to manage. We will just use it and we pay for the services we consume. And that's why it's not physical. It's on the cloud. Now tell me, are we ready to understand what is a virtual private cloud? Or do we even understand what is a private cloud for that matter? But let's not focus on AWS private cloud for now. Just think of a virtual private cloud. Do we understand what is a VPC? Or do we understand the difference between a private cloud and a virtual private cloud? Or did we think both are same? And this is what we are going to understand next. So let's start. So now let's try and understand how these models work. And I promise you at the end of this road, you will have a clear understanding of the concepts that we have and what we're trying to learn here. First off, we have the hotel. So let's see the model here. At the hotel, you have the receptionist, you have the service person and all the services that you can use and there is a price tag to every service that is on offer. You pay and you make use of that particular service made by Wi-Fi or the gym or the pool. You are not responsible for any damage that takes place in the hotel. Well, unless you are the reason for it. So you don't own the place. You don't provide the service. You just make use of it. And that is you pay as you go. Secondly, let's take the model of an independent house. In an independent house, you purchase the land, you build the house, you put your own kitchen, you set up your own bedroom, your living room, starting from the television in your living room to the kitchen sink, everything that you have is yours. You have paid for it. If anything falls out, you have to pay for it. So the good thing is you don't have to pay a tariffs to stay or for that matter, you don't have to pay to consume the services. You can stay there as long as you want. Everything is yours but you pay for the maintenance or any damage. And if you need to upgrade, you have to pay for it as well. Now let's check the third model. That is a studio apartment model. I'm not sure how many of you have stayed in a studio apartment. So here, so you have a shared space with two or three rooms in the same apartment. You have your own room, your own bed, your washroom, but the Wi-Fi, the food and the pool that you have is shared. And you need to pay for the shared feature or the service. So if you want Wi-Fi, you have to pay for it. All the members are allowed to use the pool if they pay for it. So in this model, you are paying for some of the resources that you virtually own that is not being accessed by others. Understand this. And you also share some of the resources with someone else that is your flatmate, but you have the option to choose the shared services you want. So it's also a pay as you go basis but you have some resources that are shared as well. This being the combination of both hotel and an independent house. Not exactly, but more or less. And now let's transpose this model into the real time cloud hosting. Let's talk first about the public cloud. Here in the public cloud, you have a shared space where you have the pool of resources that you need to host your application. The public cloud provider provides you an application hosting capability where you can place your code and allocate some processing power to host your application. Some of the most popular public cloud platforms are Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform, Alibaba Cloud, IBM Cloud or for that matter Oracle Cloud as well. And here you don't have much control over how the resources are being provisioned. And these are basically computing services offered by third party providers over the public internet by making them available to anyone who wants to use it. You pay and you use the services. And once your hosting is done, you either extend the contract or billing else you delete your hosting. That's simple. Next up is the private cloud. This is just like your independent house. You are not sharing your resources with anyone. Your applications are being deployed in house for yourself or for your customers. You devise security rules to define who has access to what part of your resources. You have your own IT team to manage the servers and the infrastructure. And if there is any need to expand it, you have to pay for the cost of expansion and resource provisioning. 
Mostly this is being implemented by bigger organizations to minimize the cost at the later point of time in a longer run. And these physical servers can be in the on-premise itself uh, with all the facilities or else it can be placed at other data centers where the company owns that part of the resource. Now the big fish, the virtual private cloud. I think by now you must have already got the gist and the clue of what virtual private cloud means. So when you see this, just imagine the studio apartment where you have your room and think of that as an isolated environment just for yourself. And think of other flatmates as other organizations that are in the cloud platform using the shared resources. But here you have a certain level of isolation that provides the individual space and resource for each organization. So now if I ask you what would be the best part of being in an isolated environment? The answer would be yes, of course, others won't have the access to your resources. It's completely yours. And that is why it's called a virtual private cloud. You are trying to create a virtual environment to simulate a scenario of a private cloud on a public cloud infrastructure. I hope you're getting the point here. And that is why the name is virtual private cloud because it's made to look like being private and isolated, but it's on the cloud. So here we end the initial discussion on what are the differences in cloud platforms. And we start off with Amazon's virtual private cloud. We all know that a virtual private cloud or VPC is an on demand pool of shared computing resources that can be customized as per our requirements and which is allocated within a public cloud environment. This basically helps us providing a certain level of isolation between the different organizations using the same resource or the shared resources so that you have a sense of closure between your applications, knowing that no one else is going to use or access the resources that you have. And that's the beauty of VPCs. Now let's see what Amazon has to offer with its cloud hosting platform in the form of a virtual private cloud. So now let's start off with something that AWS tells us about VPCs. So with the help of VPCs, you can provision a logically isolated section of AWS cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. So as we already discussed before, Amazon VPC is an on demand pool of shared computing resources that can be customized as per our own requirement and which is allocated within the AWS cloud environment. So everything that you know about virtual private clouds remain the same but shift the cloud infrastructure to be on AWS, that is our own cloud provider. And AWS in the form of VPC is going to provide you an isolated environment to securely host your applications and services. And as it has been already rightly mentioned here, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Amazon VPC, lets you provision a logically isolated section of the AWS cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. So here we are going to define the VPC and AWS is going to provide us with the resources. Okay. As we said, it's going to be private. Let's see what are the configurations or what are the configurable features that we get. So you get complete control over your virtual networking environment right away from the selection of your own IP address range, creating your own CIDR blocks, creating your subnets. You get the provision to configure the route tables as per your requirements, and you can configure your own network gateways. And you can also make use of both the IPv4 and IPv6 IP configurations. Here you can create your public facing subnets for your web services or web servers that you have uh, so that they have access to the internet by configuring it with the internet gateway and as well provide the restriction to your own customers by using customer gateways and by using VPC only subnets. And not just with public facing endpoints, if you wish to have it secured, you can also place your backend system such as databases or applications and in a private facing subnet with no internet access so that only you and your applications have access to these resources. And the security provisions don't stop there. With VPC, you get multiple layers of security with security groups and network access control list where you can protect both your instances and your subnets as well. So I have used a lot of heavy words here and I'm aware of the fact that you may or may not be aware of these terms, 
but nothing to worry about them we will be discussing them in detail in the upcoming sessions as well so if you haven't subscribed already now it's the right time so now let's see what are the concepts that we need to be aware of in order to get the maximum confidence when we talk about vpcs and let's understand the terminologies and we will take these terms as our benchmarks to cover vpcs so we have three types of users here who are going to consume our application and we need to design our vpc so that we can host the application and provide our services to these users or customers or even the people who are at our on premise location so here we have the people who are accessing the public internet and we have our customers who are going to use the application that we have hosted for them and we have our on premise environment where our developers at our different locations are trying to use our aws cloud infrastructure so we have to design our vpc in such a way that we can make our services available to all the users but please don't get worried about this if you don't understand these terms please don't think much about them we will be covering them that is the main goal of this one so that you if you don't understand these terms then you will be able to understand them in the upcoming sessions okay so that is the benchmark that we are going to set for us to understand vpcs okay so here we have our aws cloud and that is where we create our vpc and when we create the vpc we try and host our applications across availability zones for high availability here it is on ap south 1a so as we already spoke about we can create both public and private subnets and our security groups behind which we can place our instances to have further control over the access so here we have both our private and public ec2 instances and then we have the route tables which contain a set of rules called routes that are used to determine where network traffic from our subnets or gateways is directed and then we have the network access control list that acts as a security group for the subnets and there is the nat gateway that we have which helps private instances to access the internet and access the other aws resources as well next up we have the direct connect to the on premise location with aws vpn gateways or what we call as our virtual private gateways then we have the site to site vpn connection along with the customers gateway to connect to our customers so that they have access to our hosted applications and then we have the vpc endpoints that enable us to create a private connection between the vpc and other aws services without requiring access over the internet with vpc flow logs you can capture information about the ip traffic going to and from the network interfaces in your vpc and that actually can be published to cloudwatch and s3 as well and then we have a very popular service that is known as internet gateway which allows communication between your vpc or our vpc and the internet and that's how our applications or the programs that we have are able to access the public internet and next up is the vpc peering which helps us to establish a network connection between two vpcs that enables you to route traffic between them privately and last but not the least we have our aws private link as well this is a very important service as well and it has revolutionized things in aws vpc which provides private connectivity between vpcs aws services and on premise applications securely on the aws okay this was a lot of information but if you know these topics it's well and good but if you don't then please don't get scared of this when you understand these terms and when we complete this session of vpcs and the list of videos that we have on vpcs you will be able to explain this diagram and this architecture that we have here to others like a pro i guarantee you that so let's again highlight some of the important points that we have here so we have the route tables here we have the vpc nat gateway and we have the network access control list and from the vpcs we move ahead to cloudwatch and aws and from vpc flow logs we can capture the logs to aws cloudwatch and aws s3 and from our vpc internet gateways that we have here we can connect to dynamo db that is uh, our another aws service and to the users as well and with site to site connection and the customer gateways we are able to connect to the customers and we have the vpn gateway that we have here or the virtual private network gateway that we have and we are able to connect to the on premise uh, instances that we have using the direct connect and we have the private link here that you see this is also very important 
for us to remember that can provide us private connectivity between our VPCs, our AWS services and on-premise applications securely on the AWS. And we have the VPC peering as well, which helps us to establish a network connection between two VPCs that enables you to route traffic between them privately. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand these terms and you will be able to understand these terms very soon. And once we are done with this, you will be able to get hold of all the topics that we have here and all the terms that we have here. So make sure you watch all the videos that we put on the channel. Okay, for VPCs that will really help you understand these terms and much more. And yes, here we are at the end of the line for the VPC introduction. And I don't think and I don't want you to get scared looking at the huge set of services we have here. Some of them are very short and we will cover them very quickly and others we will cover them in detail so please don't worry about that and if you want you can take a screenshot of this and you can keep it for your reference later on but i will be keeping the track of these in the videos to come i'll have them as a roadmap for us to complete vpcs so don't worry about that but for your reference you can just take a screenshot as well but now we have a lot of things to cover but very little time so i will take a leave now but i promise i'll be back with lots more on the next session of aws and I want to tell you and I want to let you know once again that if you would like to support my work then you can do that now on Instamojo or by using PayPal and you can also join the tier 1 membership on the channel and get early access to the content by becoming a Johnny on the spot Patreon member. All the links are in the description below. If you wish to support me, please check them out. So that's it from my side today. It's Pythaholic signing off.